اوكي Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Okay. So thanks for joining. Uh, I hope everyone is here. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. And uh, thanks, uh, Mamsi, sir, for giving me the opportunity to to interact with all this uh, participants here. And uh, you know, the role uh, today's topic is the role of basic uh, immunology. And I hope everybody knows uh, about uh, my name and still I will uh, introduce myself. I am Sayyid Yunus Bukhari, Assistant Professor, uh, Department of Medical Lab Technology, University Institute of Allied Health Sciences, Chandigarh University. So if the uh, I think I hope there is anything error uh, while uh, presenting the screen. So Vamsi sir, I hope he will uh, assist me during the pre uh, presentation. Sure, sir. I will be here, sir. I will assist. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. So let's uh, start. So everybody knows about immunology and uh, from very other last discussions and. Uh, we were having different topics regarding the stem cell transplantation, especially hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. So basic things, almost you are aware about that. So let's talk about the role of immunology in uh, hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. So, uh, you know, uh, immunology is a very sir, important you part your... of medical science. Sir, are you sharing your PPT, sir? Actually, uh, yes, it's not visible. Uh, one second. Is it visible? Uh, I think it's uh, sharing, sir. One second. Uh, yes, sir. It's visible now. Yes, sir. You can proceed, sir. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. So, I'm also visible, sir. Sir, your okay. camera is not on, sir. You are not... Uh, so, immunology is... Uh... Okay. Wait, wait, sir. Sorry. Uh... Yes, sir. Sorry if I just no issue, sir. Okay, now I hope uh, it is open. Okay. Yes, sir. Visible, sir. Perfect. Okay. Okay, guys. Uh, let's discuss again about the basic immunology role, role of basic immunology uh, in a hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. So, you know, immunology is a very uh, important part of medical science. It's all about uh, the immune system, how it works. And uh, in medical treatment, uh, like hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, which is uh, a way of giving a person new blood uh, cells. Okay. So, it plays a very uh, important and big role. So, in this talk, we will uh, discuss about uh, why basic immunology. Uh, basic immunology concepts are so important in uh, hematopoietic stem cell bone marrow transplantation. Also, look how the immune system and the process of giving uh, someone new stem cells interact with each other. Okay, so and then at the end uh, we will discuss how uh, the immune system uh, rebuilds itself after the transplant. Fine. So let's start uh, first to have an overview about the immune system. The immune system is like a body's personal defense team, defense team, okay? It's a defense mechanism, you can say. Its job, you know, it's uh, to protect us from 
uh, harmful things like bacteria, viruses, or abnormal cells. Sometimes we use some common word like antigens, na? So, the, uh, or we can say foreign bodies, fine. So, if you have in between any doubts now, while I am presenting this thing, so you can ask, you can interrupt me in between. So, there are two main important parts of immune system. One is innate immunity and other adaptive immunity, fine. So, they uh, work, uh, they work together in uh, identifying and getting rid of uh, any threats to keep us healthy. Okay, so uh, uh, there is a term immunological memory, fine. Okay, so immunological memory, so we can say uh, the, how uh, our uh, antibodies or we can say our immune system respond to the same antigen and it attacks again our body, okay. So important idea in immunology is that our immune system can remember things, this is called the memory response, okay, of the adopt immune system. It means that if our body has met a germ, that is uh, like it may be virus, bacteria, or uh, any other uh, foreign body. If uh, before it, have, it, it uh, has uh, met our body, nah? it has an entered inside your body, you can say. The immune system can recognize it quickly and it fi fights it off to force it, uh, fights off faster to, uh, so that it cannot come back. So it comes, when, whenever it comes back, I mean to say, it quickly re uh, recognizes it and starts uh, fighting against it or it kills it. Once uh, it uh, it enters our in our body, okay. This helps our body stay better prepared to defend uh, with the familiar threats, okay. The threats which have already been encountered in our body. Okay, so how uh, antigen recognition is uh, happens in our bodies? Huh? That that cells in our immune system like uh, T cells, B cells, they have special uh, sensors. Okay, special sensors that we call them receptors. So the T cells and B cells have receptors, and these because of these receptors, okay, these receptors they uh, they have the ability to recognize antigen. Okay, once the antigen enters the body, it recognizes uh, 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 it, it recognizes it, and then. Uh, which are like tags, we can say, example, there, there, there are these are like tags on a harmful things uh, uh, on in our body, such as viruses or bacteria. These, uh, this recognition is super important because it helps our immune system to respond in a targeted way, okay? Because of these receptors, they quickly uh, uh, recognize the antigen or any foreign body, whether it's virus or bacteria, and it starts uh, responding in a targeted way. So it does not uh, let it go. It just kills it. Okay, so uh, there is a uh, cell mediated and uh, humoral immunity in our immune system. Uh, these two are the key aspects of our, of our immune system. Uh, one is cell mediated immunity. It involves T cells and another one is humoral in, in immunity, which involves antibodies which are produced by B cells, okay? So if we talk about cell mediated immun uh, immunity, uh, in this T cells directly combat, they directly fight uh, the threats by uh, by recognizing and attacking infected or abnormal cells. So this is simple. And another one, if we talk about humoral in, uh, immunity, it involves antibodies which are produced by our B cells. So B cells produce antibodies, special proteins, which we call them, that tag invaders for removal. So they just tag them so that our immune system will uh, uh, will uh, fight with that uh, antibody, antigen, sorry. So they tag invaders for removal by other immune system in uh, immune system components in our body. Uh, uh, there are different components of immune system. So they uh, attack, uh, attack these uh, antigens or any foreign bodies. So that these two forms of immune, uh, immunity, that whether it's a humor, humoral immunity and cell media, they together. Uh, collaborate to eliminate threats and safeguard our health. So they together attack the antigen or foreign body so that to, uh, save, to safeguard our health too, uh, so that our uh, body will uh, just remove all these uh, foreign particles from our body. Now, uh, if we talk about immunosuppression and tolerance, you know, immunosuppression and tolerance uh, by the simple, if we talk, if we say the literally the word immunosuppression and tolerance, you can get an idea that immunosuppression uh, is a, uh, it means uh, to suppress immune system, okay? Uh, and tolerance is the, uh, your body's uh, tolerance 
to resist such any uh, any organ transplant or any uh, trans uh, stem cell transplantation so immunology uh, explores these mechanisms of immune tolerance which prevent the immune system from attacking body's own cells and tissues and immunosuppression uh, is a vital concept in preventing graft versus host uh, reaction or we can say disease so in immunosuppression uh, deliberately we in this immunosuppression uh, we deliberately weaken the immune system using some medications okay uh, we just uh, make our immune system uh, suppress we uh, to, so that it cannot uh, react with a uh, new thing now so uh, whatever we transplant that's organ transplant for example it's uh, so that it's crucial in organ transplantation to prevent the rejection in treating autoimmune diseases by dampening overactive immune response okay so we use some medication, some uh, immune, immunosuppressive drugs, uh, medication, so that uh, our uh, uh, so our body will not uh, uh, reject them, and so we will it will prevent rejection. Okay, so treating autoimmune disease uh, by dampening or active immune response. Maybe uh, when something uh, new uh, comes inside inside your body, whether it's antigen, anything, so our body responds to that now so it stimulates our uh, antibodies so to suppress such things uh, we use some medication in during transplantation we are talking about stem cell transplantation for example so tolerance means uh, it is a state whether uh, where the immune uh, stem accepts a foreign substance without any adverse reaction okay so in transplantation our goal is to uh, our goal is that the, for the immune stem to accept transplant organs naturally uh, so that it can reduce or we can say eliminating the need for ongoing immunosuppressive drugs. So there will be not uh, any need for uh, such drugs which will uh, uh, reduce, uh, which, will, uh, 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 which will suppress the immune system because there are some side effects also for such drugs, no? such medications, immunosuppressive. So it should not be too much uh, that uh, will cause some other complication. So tolerance means when our immune system accepts the foreign substance without any adverse reaction. Okay. So if we talk uh, the go for the other topic in immunology in stem cell transplantation, we have here uh, one term with graft, uh, preventing graft to uh, uh, react. Sir, you are not audible, sir. Zaya, sir. Just wait, students. Zaya, sir, got some internet uh, connection issues. Sir will join again. All right, meanwhile, I will continue the session uh, until sir is joining. Uh, see here, students, I will tell a few interesting things about this immune rejection and uh, stem cell transplantation. See, whenever we are giving any transplantation to the body, okay, the, the body's immune system will reject outside, uh, out, outside uh, parts or foreign things because our body only accepts our own cells and we our body will... Uh, you know, reject outside things. That's how the immune system works. That's how we are fighting against the parasites or any infections, right? Now, listen, when I'm giving any transplant to the patient, I need to suppress the patient's immune system and patient's immune system must accept the transplanted tissue. If patient immune system not accepting the transplanted tissue, okay, the transplanted tissue will be rejected. 
and that rejection is caused by patient immune cells. Patient immune cells such as natural killer cells, patient uh, white cells. Okay? Won't, yes. that, won't that trigger autoimmune diseases? Like when the patient cell like attack the if you suppress the immune. Uh, will that cause an autoimmune? Ah, very good. Very good. That is a good question. Uh, listen, students. Listen. First of all, how our immune system recognizing a foreign particle? That is one important attribute. How our immune system recognizing a foreign particle? So our immune system will uh, recognize foreign particles by two methods. Keep in mind, these two methods are called as HLA. Okay. So we have two types of markers in the body. We have HLA class 1 and HLA class 2 markers. Okay, HLA class 1 present only on uh, uh, CD8 cells, whereas HLA class 2 present in all the cells of the body. So I just want to re-verify HLA class 1 and class 2. In a nutshell, what happens is macrophages has HLA1, whereas all other cells have HLA2. Now, with this HLA1 and 2, they will read each other, then they will target a, a, a foreign particle. Uh, now, listen, my body cells have two types of HLA molecules. Some, uh, For example, the normal cell should have HLA2. A normal uh, body cell must have a HLA2. Now, what happened is, unfortunately, my cell lost its HLA2 molecule. HLA2 is like a ID card, university ID card. One second. Listen. Uh, how the Chandigarh University knows that I'm an employee to university? Because I have an I card, right? I have a, a, a unique university uh, employee number. So with this number, they can track me. Let us assume I lost my I card. I lost my I card and I entered into the university. Is the university going to accept me? Is the gods will accept me? They won't accept. They need some proof that I am the university employee. Okay. In some times, in our body, our own cells will lose their identity. Just like this I card, uh, every cell has their own identity. That is HLA2. Okay. And the, the God is HLA1. HLA1 is God and HLA, God, okay. Uh, police, police, we can say. And HLA2 is the identity. If my cell, if my own cell lost its identity, my immune system will treat it as a foreign my immune system will be activated and my uh, my own immune system attacking my own cell because my cell lost its identity identity by the name of hla okay this can happens rarely sometimes some of the cells in the body will lose their identity i will give one best example in the synovial joint there is this uh, cartilaginous bone sometimes during friction or during some viral attack, the cartilaginous bone will lose its identity. The cartilage bone in the synovial joint lost its HLA identity. Then what happens? Immediately, my immune system will think this cartilage is a foreign cartilage and the immune system will start attacking the joints. The immune system will start attacking my synovial joints, resulting in autoimmune disorders. Now you understood, right? How autoimmune disorders are connected with HLA typing and HLA markers. That means even our own body cells have their own identity cards. If they lose their identity, our immune system will attack our own body. Similarly, if I want to get a transplantation from a patient, the pay, uh, okay, uh, I want to tell one important thing. My name is VIMSI, WOMC. This is my I card. Okay, I will only accept WOMC persons in my body. That is how immune system works. My immune system only, uh, you know, it will only accept WOMC. That's it. It won't accept others. If I'm giving any power or faith or uh, any other people, my immune system will reject. But let me let 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 I give you one example. What if there is another WOMC, but he is not so similar, but very similar to me? Maybe his name is VAM-C. He also looks like a WOMC, VAMC. My name is VAMSI. So very similar to my immune system, I might accept the tissue. That means HLA molecules have a pattern. 
if the pattern is very similar to the you know if donor pattern is very similar to the recipient then their immune system might accept it but getting that perfect match is very tough getting a perfect uh, tissue typing is very tough that is why during any transplantation we are doing this uh, trans uh, this uh, hla typing only once hla typing is matching then we will proceed for transplantation now okay hla matched hla typing was matched okay but it is not pure match pure match we won't find anywhere in the world unless uh, i have a identical twin or I, unless i have my embryonic stem cells i won't get a, a precise duplicate of womsi we won't get it we won't get a du precise proper donor to the patient it's not possible so what we are doing we are going with a similar tissue into the body we are giving a similar tissue into the uh, recipient now what happens is since it is not so similar it is a foreign my patient's immune system will attack the tissue patient's immune system will attack the tissue with the help of natural killer cells t cells b cells their macrophage cells neutrophils all the patient cells can able to target my transplanted tissue this same problem can happen during a stem cell transplantation also during stem cell transplantation there are a chances of rejection okay when the cells are not appropriate when the cells quantity is less when the cells don't expressing their hla molecules properly when the cells are under stress the cells are not preserved properly in the bank during uh, during collection of stem cells we might uh, damage the cells during apheresis process all these factors lead to a failure in engraftment you know engraftment means ac acceptance of foreign tissue into the body is called as engraftment a successful engraftment requires a super challenging things okay very rarely uh, the body will accept a foreign uh, uh, tissue okay once it is accepted then you know it, it is called as a successful transplantation but we need to keep the patient under uh, uh, observation for next two to three months to see whether the immune system was accepting the graft or not graft means the transplanted tissue or not so that's why what we will do classically means we will purposefully destroy the immune system of the recipient if I, i'm going to receive uh, a transplanted tissue first i will give some drugs to the patient to destroy the patient's immune system when i say destroying patient's immune system i was targeting the patient's bone marrow because it is the bone marrow who is developing blood cells let me destroy the bone marrow first so patient won't reject the uh, transplanted tissue but this will cause an issue the problem is since i destroyed the patient's bone marrow patient don't have any immune system at all that means they can die with a simple e coli infection they can die with a runny nose they can die with a uh, you know uh, cold because i have i have deleted their immune system this approach is called as chemotherapy under chemotherapy we are destroying you know we are partially killing a patient we are partially killing the patient but ensuring that the patient stay alive and patient will be kept in a pure isolated clean rooms as previously uh, miss vanshika ma'am said we will keep the patient in a hepa filter room hepa filter room is this room is very clean in this room we will keep the patient this is a severe intensive care unit icu in this room we will you know the patient became a very fragile like a glass we need to protect the patient during this chemotherapy and during this um, during this uh, uh, you know transplanting process so and we will slowly observe so the immune system has a tendency to tolerate even a foreign substance so we will see whether the immune system accepting the tissue or not upon you know within 3 months it will be accepted so uh, to bypass these problems to bypass this uh, um, tissue rejection problems the best ideal candidate will be always auto transplantations autograft autograft means is it possible to take my own stem cells and transfer to my own body 
since I'm taking my own stem cells, my cells have my own uh, MHA molecules, HLA molecules, and my immune system has same HLA molecules. So my immune system can able to tolerate my cells. Can I do auto transplant? Can I take my teeth cells, teeth stem cells, can I re-engineer re re the stem cells into the desired candidate? Can I re-engineer my teeth stem cells to a pancreatic cell? And can I re-transplant my cells? Yes, there are possibilities. Sometimes we can do auto-transplantation. So sometimes what I will do is, I came to know that my patient don't have any genetic disorders. Patient don't have any genetically, he is good. But he catched cancer via some virus. He catched cancer via some virus. So what I will do, I will keep the, uh, I will collect the patient stem cells. First, I collected the patient stem cells. Then I destroyed the patient uh, uh, body. Okay, I destroyed the patient's uh, bone marrow by giving chemotherapy. So chemotherapy, uh, along with cancer cells, chemo drugs will also kill all viruses, everything. So patient became pure. I already isolated his stem cells and I will re-transplant stem cells into the body, into the body of patient. And it will be successfully accepted because they are the same cells of the patient. This is how we can use stem cells as a therapeutic candidate in some cases. I think it is clear now. Any doubts? Can you able to see the screen? Okay, I yes, didn't see. You, you saw the screen, right? Yeah. See? Uh, now, is it clear how we can use stem cells for transplantation? Yeah. Yes, so, sir, it's uh, clear. yes, I think uh, uh, Zayed sir is not a join. Let me check the can participants. I think sir got some internet issue. Don't worry. Um, so yeah, sir's topic is about immune system. Okay. How uh, first we are trying to understand what immune cells are destroying these uh, th these things. Okay. So yeah. So we came to know there are natural killer cells. All these things. We will try to give drugs. The drugs will block these immune cells. The drugs will inactivate these immune cells during the during the process of transplantation. The patient won't develop any uh, this rejection issues. And uh, the classical term for rejection is called as graft versus host diseases. If the patient develop any graft rejection, that disease is called as graft versus host diseases. GVHD, GVHDs. Uh, GV, GV, uh, graft versus host diseases can be manageable. But listen, students, we also need to consider the patient age and uh, other parameters need to be, uh, you know, considered uh, for the successful, uh, you know, for the successful transplantation, actually. Uh, ideally, uh, teenagers can able to uh, sustain these transplantation methods, but old age people, the chances of survival is very less because old age people cannot tolerate these toxic drugs. We are giving chemo drugs. No, chemo drugs will also, uh, you know, they will have side effects on normal cells, maybe the brain cells. So yeah, there are many challenges. And uh, yes, it's a very toughest thing to maintain a patient, uh, you know, actually, you know, the life is a God's gift. And uh, apart from God, uh, keeping us alive is very tough as challenge. We will intervene in between, but um, no, it's not a permanent solution. But we will, we will, we will try to keep. We will try our best to keep the patient alive. Whatever we can do, we can do it. Mm -hmm. And that is how we got all this modern medicine and all these techniques. We are trying to escape from the death with various methods. And uh, one of the ideal weapon we have is stem cells. Can we escape death from using stem cells? So that is, a, you know, humans are always optimistic. We are always uh, curious. We are always positive. We will, we will, we are always trying to, you know, we have that more positive mindset that we will achieve this. Yeah, maybe not now, but but in the near future, we might even become immortals. We might be, we there won't be any death to the humans, or humans might live up to two hundred years. That is possible because the research is going in a right direction and uh, uh, in the age of artificial intelligence, our, uh, uh, our uh, depth of understanding has been enhanced with uh, this artificial intelligence. So yes, only the God can stop us. So there will be a good progress in the humanity uh, and, uh, and we are very lucky that we are in a time where 
we can able to talk each other through this internet see even i'm sitting in my room and you are sitting in your room but you are listening to me so yeah in this era everything is possible and uh, let us be optimistic and there will be those good days the good days are very soon so that's it that's it all about uh, this uh, stem cells thank you very much any doubts sir there is a comment in the chat there's a comment now uh, let me check the comment yeah okay uh I think it would be very dangerous to harvest stem cells of a cancer patient when, uh, wait, I think it would be very dangerous to harvest stem cells of a cancer patient because he will be given tablets that enhance stem cell proliferation in bone marrow before extracting and purifying his stem cells from previous disease because the tablets, no, 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 see, Okay, uh, this listen. Cancers can occur because of two reasons: epigenetic and genetic. Okay, that means genetic means by genetically the patient has a cancer gene, so we can't do anything. If the patient already how genetically there is a cancer genes, we can't do anything. What if this cancer came because of a virus? I want to show you a pictures of viral infection, uh, if possible. Uh, let me re read other comments also. This is when we are talking about auto trans. Okay, yeah, this the student also saying about auto transplants. Even in auto transplants, listen, we need to see whether the cancer happened because of genetic origin or due to viral origin. If it is a viral origin, there is a virus called uh, uh, Epstein Barr virus. Epstein Barr virus will induce a Bucket's lymphoma, that is a, a lymphoproliferative leukemia, that is blood cancer. Since it is a viral cancer, let me treat the virus. Let me give drugs of the virus, so the virus will be destroyed in the body, and he will be recovered. So what I will do is, I will isolate the pure stem cells from the body. I will isolate this. Uh, in this condition, the cancer is because of virus. What I will do? First, I will collect the stem cells, okay? Non-infected stem cells from the body. We have approaches to collect non-infectious stem cells because virus can only attack differentiated cells. Virus only attacks adult cells, not the stem cells. Virus cannot migrate to the bone marrow. So I will take the bone marrow, the pure bone marrow, I, then I will keep patient under chemo. So all the cells along with the virus will be destroyed. Then I will reintroduce the good stem cells into the body. This is only possible if the patient is not genetically predisposed to the cancer. This is only possible when there is a cancer by viruses. But with a genetic uh, cancers, uh, it is very tough, as you said. But there are candidates called uh, uh, gene editing techniques like CRISPR-Cas9. I always used to say CRISPR-Cas9 can able to uh, edit the genetically exposed diseases. If the genet, uh, for example, recently they did uh, an experiment where a by birth he is blind, but they removed the blindness of the patient. We came to know that this blindness happened because patient not pro producing a protein because he's he, he don't have the uh, the DNA to make a eye protein. So what we did, we took CRISPR, we reinserted the DNA into the body into the eyes, and the eyes started protein the redoxins proteins, and he, the patient has first time seen the world. A genetically blind patient has seen the world 